Okay, welcome to the University of Portland's Pamplin School of Business. Thank you for being here tonight. I know you have a lot of options when you look at graduate school. And so tonight what we're gonna do is share a little bit about what makes the University of Portland different, and then we'll dig into details, the curriculums, the application process, tuition, frequently asked questions, all of that good stuff. Um, so to start, what I'd like to um, highlight is our faculty, which is really the thing that makes UP different. And we hear this over and over from our students and our, our alumni, that the faculty members and their support uh, is really why University of Portland stands out. So I'd love to introduce our Associate Dean, Dr. Adams, and our strategy expert and professor, Dr. Holloway. Uh, so my job tonight is explain to you why UP, why UP for graduate business education. Uh, first off, I'd say the most important thing you can look for in a graduate business program is an AACSB certification. And a lot of people don't understand really what that means. But AACSB, what they do is they make sure that schools have faculty in place that are committed and qualified to teach what they teach and also to make sure that there are learning goals for each class. And those learning goals have measurable objectives and those objectives are met by a majority of the students that go through the program. So all the top business programs in the US have AACSB accreditation. All the main ones around Portland do too, but not all of them do. And I would really highly recommend that when you're searching, AACSB is a really important designation to make sure, just like when you walk into a bank and you make sure that FDIC sticker or their NCUA sticker, I'm a finance professor, is there when you walk into your bank. It's, it's the same thing. Um, secondly, uh, uh, another great thing about our program is the flexibility. Uh, about 80%, I think, of our students are part-time, meaning they work full-time. So we really strive to make this process as easy as we can on you. We understand the sacrifices you have to make to go through an MBA or an MS program, the, the, the time commitment, um, the, the lack of social life, the lack of family time. It, it really takes a lot. So we try to do our best to make it as easy as possible. Melissa is here to provide high-touch customer service for everybody that walks through our door. Just like Nordstrom, we try to differentiate ourselves with our customer service. We understand each of our students that come through is very important because you go from an, a student to an alum. And alums are what market uh, an MBA program and an MS program. The better our alums do in their careers, the better we do as a program. And Melissa makes sure that happens. Uh, also, the flexibility in how we offer programs or our courses are also changing. Yes, we have the in-class courses and I highly recommend that's the best way to learn is in class with other people, other professionals uh, around, you know, w w thinking what you're thinking, thinking opposite of what you're thinking and everybody's in the classroom talking about different, um, different ideas. That's, I think that's number one. But there are times when an online class makes sense. When you're traveling or you have family uh, constraints, we offer online classes so you don't have to come to campus uh, every semester. We also have a classroom on the west side in the Silicon Forest out in Bethany. And so it makes it easier for those of you who live on the west side or maybe south of town where you can go to that classroom that has the same technology that we have here at UP and you can take courses out there from, from our professors. We travel out there to teach courses to make it easier on you too. Uh, we're also developing hybrid courses where we will meet on campus maybe once or twice a month and then online the other times. We just continually are looking for how can we still give you the most valuable learning experience we can give you while making it easy as you on you as possible as you go through the program. So flexibility is really important. Uh, third, professors like Sam. Uh, Sam Holloway, I, so I conduct exit interviews after students finish the program. I meet with them one of their last days as on, on campus and to a person, when I ask what are the best things about the program, it's faculty, and they name Sam by name. Uh, a lot of students that we have that go through the program say, I will take every course that Dr. Holloway teaches. And that is a direct quote. Melissa's heard it before, too. Lily's probably heard it before, too. And uh, it, it, we have a lot of other professors like that, too. All of our professors are committed. 
All of our professors understand the reason you are here is to interact with them to get their personal knowledge on the subject, not just a PowerPoint slide, not just a recorded lecture, but an interaction with the professor. So that is really important to us and our professors make sure that they're available for you. Again, as a finance professor, for me, it's about my return on investment, okay? Uh, the numerator, the return that you get from a completing a program, yes, it's quantitative, it's uh, advancement in your career, it, it's, it's more money and compensation, but it's also you know, just the, the idea that I did something. I did something that is really difficult for people to do. Uh, yes, there are graduate business degree programs out there and a lot of people have them, but most of the population do not. So it's a really high hurdle to accomplish and, and and those types of return ideas, the more qualitative um, return components, they're there too. So you're gonna get that from us. But also what's important is that you're gonna get for that from us at a low denominator. If you compare tuition costs around the area, what schools charge for their MBA programs, if we're not the lowest, we're one of the lowest. And it's not because we're a cheap program, it's because the University of Portland's mission is dedicated to providing a valuable learning experience at as low a cost as possible. And I don't know how high our tuition has moved over the last 10 years since I've been uh, on as associate dean, but it hasn't been very much. We try to keep it as low as possible so that that return really makes an impact on you in the end and the cost that it, it takes to get through the program is doable, that it can be done. Um, without, without creating some hardships. So definitely ROI is a strong component too uh, for what we have to offer here at University of Portland. I'm really happy that you're here tonight because you're all about to make a really important decision. And when you're selecting an MBA program, I think fit matters. I think fit with your personal life and the ability to take classes, a class here or a class there versus a 100% cohort model. I think fit with your professional goals. I think finding the program that has the faculty members that are really experts in the field that you're interested in. We have experts from, that used to run software companies. Um, me personally, I'm the board of directors of a craft brewery. I also run a technology company in addition to being a professor. So we have faculty that are actively engaged in the business community. We're not sort of stuck in an ivory tower uh, reading our theoretical articles and writing papers for each other. That's part of our job. But I think what you get here at the University of Portland, particularly with our uh, MBA and MS faculty, are people that are out there doing things too. We're actually actively engaging with other companies. We run companies of our own. And we're, we're dedicated to adjusting our curriculum every semester because the business world changes a lot faster than business theories do. And if your school and the people at that school are not cons constantly adjusting and improving what they're doing, you're gonna get left behind. And so that's one thing I would really encourage you to do as you're looking at other programs is ask the faculty members, what are you doing differently now than you did five years ago? Because gosh, it sure seems like business is different than it was five years ago. So for an example, I came back from a, a sabbatical uh, a couple of years ago where I moved to Europe. I, it's a great job. I got to move to Europe with my family, spend a year studying European beer markets because that's what I do. I'm a beer industry researcher. And when I came back, I realized, there's a lot of MBA programs in Europe, highly respected MBA programs in Europe and the United States that are doing a really good job of preparing their students for 1995. This was in 2017. And I came back and I said, we have an opportunity here at UP to be better than our competitors. And it's not just by uh, you know, uh, offering you know, better versions of old classes. It's actually about offering new classes that the people that are gonna hire you upon graduation expect you to be able to perform in and expect you to be able to deliver value to their companies. I think that's the biggest difference in the program that we offer here in the Pacific Northwest is that our faculty are constantly out in the field, engaged with companies, engaged with hiring departments, finding out what do we need to do to change what we're doing so that we give you preferential hires and the best people to add value to your company. If another school is doing a better job than us at that, I'd love for you to show me because I think we're really cutting edge when it comes to being able to change and adapt and mirror what the market wants every semester, every chance we get. Could you talk just for a second, and this relates to your dynamic curriculum, yeah. right, about your customer experience analytics? Sure. Yeah. So uh, the class that I've taught most in this school is called um, Strategic Management. It's our capstone MBA class, and it basically ties together 
all the accounting and finance and operations and marketing, everything that you've learned so far into kind of a management decision-making model. So we go over all the different ways that managers can make decisions. I teach you all the different ways that, um, that you ought to make decisions. And you can, that way, at the end of it, you can approach any, any potential decision you have from about seven or eight perspectives and sort of decide the correct one. Well, that, that's a really good way to behave if you're making decisions as a market leader if you're in a traditional manufacturing business, if you're in a business where the, customer, um, uh, the customers haven't changed very much in the last 20 years. But it can be a difficult place to make a decision if customer experiences and um, sort of uh, and digital and technology are a big part of how you organize your firm. So think about it. Uh, 20 years ago, it would have been really strange for a company like Apple to say, here's the code. To, that we use to make money. We're gonna give it to you. We'd like to see what you can create for this, and then we'll even sell it for you and just take a small percentage for ourselves. That's common now. Well, traditional strategic management, traditional strategy, you didn't let customers into your firm to, te to tell you on a daily basis what you should be doing, what you might be doing wrong, what you could be doing better. Well, now that's commonplace. And so I realized that I had to change my strategy class into a class based on if customer experiences Okay, if unique, memorable, personal customer experiences are a primary predictor of competitive advantage and winning, how do I need to change my traditional strategy class to incorporate those things to make sure that we can keep redefining what winning means based on the market that people are in? And that was a big change I made two years ago. I'm teaching the second rendition of that class right now. Um, I've got 18 students, a pretty big class for an elective, so I think it's resonating with students in terms of, wow, I can take this today, I can learn tonight with my peers, with this professor, and tomorrow I can go back to work and make a difference. Yes? What time do you usually teach courses? So uh, for our graduate students, we have two, two choices, four days a week, either four to seven or seven to 10 uh, during the traditional academic year, which is late August to late April. Um, and then in summer, it's actually really advantageous for students, <laughs> especially if you want to accelerate your uh, degree completion. We shrink a, normally a 16-week course down into six weeks, and we do that twice, uh, twice a week, like a Monday, Wednesday, or a Tuesday, Thursday, four hours each day, which is a lot, but it also allows you to knock out three credits in six weeks instead of 15 or 16 weeks. Last thing I have to tell you, one of the coolest requirements we have in the MBA program here at UP is our international travel requirement. So some of you might say, well, that sounds expensive, and that is, all, that is true. It can be a little bit expensive, but Another way that we differentiate is several of us in the MBA program, myself included, we operate global businesses and we have contacts uh, with executives all over the world. So about every 12 months or so, I design one of our normal classes, whether it's innovation, strategy, cross-cultural management, leadership, and we take that class overseas, where I set up meetings with executives at you know, Fortune 50 companies, usually in Europe. Uh, we, other professors go to Asia, Latin America. My classes are usually in Europe. And we'll go and we'll meet with these executives. We'll, I'll train you on all the soft skills, how to get an executive to take your business card. How do you go get new business from somebody you've never met before and you might not ever talk, talk to again unless you are successful in that one chance that you have. And so those overseas trips are some of the most memorable and impactful things that our students, I think, report in their exit interviews. And there's about five or six of us professors that we leverage, again, our personal networks, our professional networks, to put you in front of some of the thought leaders all over the world, and I don't think a lot of other MBA programs do that. We just today okay. had someone um, sign up for the fall class. I said, we can't register yet, and they said, oh, I'm going to Rotterdam, Amsterdam. Yes, so my next trip is uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, we'll fly into near Rotterdam. Uh, we'll spend a few days touring around companies in Rotterdam, including a Rotterdam, anybody been to Rotter Rotterdam before? So the water taxi system on the Rhine River that goes through Rotterdam is really cool. So one of the days we're actually gonna go take the water taxis upriver to Erasmus University, meet some of my professor friends over there, and then take the water taxis downriver to the Nolette Family Distillery, makers of Kettle One Vodka, and we're gonna do a two-hour presentation and a tasting with us, because if you can't have fun while you're learning, I think you're missing out. So I, I brag about our faculty a lot, and you can see why. Um, the students absolutely love them. Teaching is their first priority. 
Um, they respond quickly. They're here for the support of the students, and they plug you into a lot of their networks, which is really outstanding. So they're a lifetime connection for you. Um, the AACSB, um, Dr. Adams covered, and, and really that is something that guarantees excellence. So you're putting in a big investment of your time, your, your money and finances, um, and so it's really nice to know that, it, um, that we have that gold stamp of AACSB. Uh, the flexibility, so as you're looking at graduate programs, um, you, we all have unique distinguishing features. So for UP, we hear over and over again the faculty, the accreditation and high quality, the flexibility, and the professional development. So the flexibility means a number of things. First of all, as, as we just discussed, our classes are in the evening. They're one night per week. So most of them are from 710 to 955. Some are from 410 to 655. So it is pretty manageable for people that put in full days and work um, to come through at a part-time pace, taking one or two classes a week. Um, that evening structure is great for our full-time students as well because they have the day to do internships, job shadows, homework, informational interviews, all of those kinds of things, and then they can um, be networking in class with the folks that are working in these different companies and industries. Um, so you can go at your own pace as well, another element of flexibility. You can start any semester. Um, you can take time off. Um, we have uh, someone that just came back from law school, so um, he took a few years off, um, but it's flexible in that regard. Um, you have six years to complete the program, so you can grow old with us if you're interested, um, or you can get it done in one year. So it's a nice, flexible pace. Um, we also have the West Side location, which Dr. Adams covered as well for me, um, which is convenient for our folks that live and work on the West Side. So a lot of our Nike, Columbia, Intel um, students will like to um, only take classes at that West Side space. It's also a great area for um, meeting off-site edit with a group at your company or renting it, um, so it's a really good spot. Professional development, and I'll let Lilia, our expert, jump in here, but we do a lot outside the classroom to help promote the professional development elements for students. So um, I email something almost every day, whether it's a workshop or a learning lab or an internship or a job opportunity um, that students can take advantage of or not. So we have some that will plug into absolutely everything that we have, and other students are checking the box for the grad degree and they don't have a lot more bandwidth to, um, to participate in, in everything, but we have those opportunities for you. So it's a really good, um, really good tools, really good resources and centers. So um, as we dig into some of the details, one thing I like to uh, highlight is who else is in class with you? So our student profile. We have, amongst our four graduate business programs, we have about 150 students. Because of our flexible model, we graduate students every semester, we start students every semester, so we're always rolling around 150 students. Um, the other benefit of the classroom setting is that you have a really wide, diverse group of classmates. So we have some students that might be coming for a fifth year after undergrad, and we have some people that are in their 50s. So we have um, different backgrounds represented, different experiences. Um, about three quarters of our students are part-time students. They're taking one or two classes a semester. And then the other quarter are our full-time students taking three or four classes per semester. And then what I love, um, another element of the learning and the classroom dynamic is our international students. So 15% of our students are international. This year, China and Saudi Arabia and India were our, our top um, numbers as far as the countries um, that we've drawn from. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, my background's not in business, am I gonna have to take additional classes or prerequisites? And the answer is no, you're actually in the majority of your classmates. Um, over half of our students don't have a background in business or an undergrad degree in business. Um, we have a lot of engineers, social science, liberal arts, so it's a really fun, again, another dynamic in the classroom. Um, this represents where our students are from internationally. Um, and I, one of my favorite stories, and actually this just happened again, uh, we have a, an alum in Brazil, and um, one of his classmates and fellow alums goes down there for work quite a bit, and they'll always send me a picture of like, cheers from, from Brazil, and so it's really fun to connect with people all over the globe. 
Um, so this is just a little bit of a sample on where people are from. And then the other really neat thing um, to highlight is where people are working. So we have a lot of different uh, companies represented, industries represented, uh, the big Nike, Intel, Daimlers of the world, to small startups, to healthcare, um, to law, to finance. Um, so there's a really fun uh, smattering of different companies. This year, 10% uh, of our students are from Daimler, 8% are Adidas, and 7% are, are Nike. So with our North Portland campus, as you can imagine, um, Daimler and Adidas are about a mile or two away. So proximity-wise, it makes sense. We also have a really great tuition um, discount partnership with them too, 15%.